we all know the familiar mechanic from Souls-like games. Defeating a boss, taking their soul and transforming it into a weapon or spell that once belonged to them. But what if you could take it a step further, actually possess abilities of even non-boss enemies? What if you also have a limited number of slots and you need to carefully choose which ability fits your needs at the moment? And if that's still not enough, what if you could modify this ability even further to create something absolutely unique? Hello everyone, I'm Yulia and today we will be talking about magic. How do you do that? Oh, magic. Let me first formally introduce myself. So, apart from being a $10 barrel hater in my free time, I also happen to be a designer with years of experience working on AAA projects with an emphasis on the player's side of the game, so player combat, abilities and RPG progression. The first thing that spiked my curiosity for the Valis project was the potential of introducing a unique player ability system that would make our souls like really stand out. So naturally we went for soul sucking. <laughs> Don't cross the street. I'll clarify that what I mean by that is a player mechanic that would allow them to absorb the soul of a defeated enemy and so acquire an ability unique to this enemy. To trigger this mechanic in-game, player would need to engage in combat with an enemy and once they have reduced its health to about 10-15%, an interaction prompt will appear. At this point, they can use the prompt to initiate the soul absorption process and voila, the new ability is in the player's possession. The absorption mechanic, when it comes to the other video game references, is meant to be something between the blood-sucking mechanic from V Rising, in terms of its theme, and the smooth, dynamic and very satisfying finisher from the recent Doom game, in terms of its functionality. When it comes to the design reasoning behind us choosing this direction for the magical abilities for our brave hero, well, First of all, we really wanted to avoid having a classic fireball type of magic that would not bring anything excessively engaging into our game and even more so in the genre, and instead focusing on finding something more unique. Secondly, we've analyzed some titles in the genre, like well, probably the most famous example, Elden Ring, and came to a mutual conclusion that the most satisfying and rewarding part of the player abilities actually came from the weapons and spells that were transmuted from bosses and ability signature to them. Why? Because we've seen those abilities being used against us, creating the best PR campaign possible for them. Thirdly, we wanted to create a close connection between the player and their magic system by giving them tools to tweak and customize their magic abilities, which I will talk about in the later part of the video. Speaking of sucking souls from enemies, let's touch a little bit on the direction of enemies in our game. This topic is hugely important for me personally, as this is something I focus on in my daily work, so there is definitely going to be a separate video about it. But for now, it's important to mention, enemies in Project Velas will be divided into enemy tiers. We're currently planning to have three tiers of enemies in the game. Tier 1 will hold all the enemies that have one streak to go in their life, to die from player's hand. Those will be the weakest enemies in the game, just a cannon fodder type of enemies. Then there will be enemies of tier 2, which will pose a bigger threat in the encounter. Player will have to be a bit more careful when fighting them, especially when there is more than one enemy of tier 2 in the group. Tier 3 will hold enemies that are elite, ones that will pose a high level of threat for the player. Those will usually appear quite rarely, but will require higher level of combat mastery to defeat. Other than those three tiers, we are planning to have boss encounters as a separate type of enemies. The whole idea of splitting enemies for tiers have a lot of reasoning which I'll cover in a devlog dedicated to enemies design. One of such reason is player's prioritization of who to kill first and how to adjust their build progression to group of enemies. I'm mentioning the tiers here simply because we are not planning for the souls sucking mechanic to be part of every single enemy in the game. It will be based on the enemy tier. For now we are assuming that the enemies of tier 2 and 3 will be soul suckable, while enemies of tier 1 will not. Now, regarding what we have already implemented in-game as a first prototype, we have our initial ability from our first prototype enemy, the Fire Chain Pool. 
Here's how it works. After player absorbs the soul of the, the fire chain demon guy, they can summon a fire chain to pull and ignite enemies. Additionally, if player defeats the ignited enemy within, let's say, 6 seconds, we're actually very far from issuing a balance patch just yet, you can perform a brutal, picturesque finisher, and the picturesque part is yet to be implemented, but it involves thrusting their weapon through the enemy's body, allowing the fire to spread through that weapon, imbuing it with fire. To accomplish that, I had to implement a number of systems that would support this mechanic. Stats, abilities, inventory, equipment, status effect and interaction systems, but obviously that was a background work in between implementation of the swine system. Now let's finally enter the topic of magical progression. Here I can say that we are planning for the player to be able to invest into it in three different ways. First one will be about upgrading the tool itself that allows the player to absorb the soul in the first place, and the practical example here would be upgrading it to gain an additional slot for a soul, so player would be able to wield two souls at the same time instead of one. The next one would be the classic stat upgrades. Player will be able to level up stats specific to the preferred ability, so they could, for example, get higher fire damage output on their fire ability. And the last but not least would be the perks progression well, magic section of it. It would allow the player to tweak and modify their abilities to fit their unique playstyle. Here I want to mention that both the stats system and the perks are definitely big enough topics to discuss on their own, so stay tuned. As a short summary, I want to mention that I'm actually super curious where this magical journey will take us. In my experience working on multiple projects, you, well, never really end up exactly where you thought you would. When we started recording this video, something quite interesting happened. Black Myth Wukong had its release. And, well, we noticed that it kinda has the system we are designing for Valence, with player being able to absorb enemy's ability. Does that mean we should scrap the direction we were going with and start something from scratch? No. You see, a game development is a process that takes a long time, even with hundreds of people involved in the project. Cory Barlock, the game director of God of War, jokingly said that they had to have a mole in the studio, because when they were working on the game, they learned that Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice was based on a very similar setting, touching on the Norse mythology. But looking at those two games, years after their release, it's actually quite hard to find a lot of elements that those two have in common, other than the setting. Even when some ideas seem similar on paper, all that matters is the execution of them and how they become to fit among other mechanics of the game. So we're definitely sticking to these ideas. But maybe now we have an additional motivation element to make this mechanic more interesting. And that's it for this devlog. To summarize, so far we spent about a month and a half on Project Velas. In the next devlog, we will touch on a different aspect of the game, which is player movement and traversal mechanics for the game. If you like our content, please subscribe to this channel. According to the YouTube statistics, most of people watching those videos are not subscribed. So let's change that. See you in the next one. Bye.